sacrifice in career, giving up possessions, isolation from family, friends, and the outside world. These are examples of some of the conditions needed to be met by a person willing to join a cult or to be politically correct and RMS, new religious movements, from the article 10 of the most infamous cults. Cults are defined as a group of people joined together by a common ideological system fostered by a charismatic leader. You may think that this is something nobody would ever wish to pursue. To give up practically your whole life seems unlikely. However, as shocking as it may sound, it is actually quite simple to be lured into such an organization. Their suasive of coercion can suck you in like the most powerful of whirlpools. Currently, there are 2,500 to 3,000 cults in the United States as of now. The number of members ranges from 300,000 to 3 million. After hours of research and pages of notes, I came to realize how powerful and effective these groups truly are. Cults have been around for ages. There have been a few that have good intention, but many do not. It is important to know the precautionary measures to be taken. One must be informed on how they can be drawn into them, what really goes on behind their closed doors, and what happens to people who have joined. Let us first look into why people are motivated to associate them with in the first place. Uh, there are different types of cults. One is the doomsday. The doomsday cults convince people that there is some kind of catastrophe that's about to occur or that the end of the world is to happen soon. They pull people in by convincing them that they will have them a good promise in their afterlife or whatever they believe in or that they will help them survive this event. There is also religious and political, which are quite self-explanatory. And the commercial. Commercial is pretty interesting. They um, promise people success, usually financial. And they have their members work for the cult practically for free. So the cult leaders are actually making all this money while their members are like working like slaves thinking that they're going to be rich soon. Um, a popular one that's really increasing today is the self-help and counseling. These uh, cults, they um, target businesses and corporations. They promise the CEOs and all of the business bosses that they can somehow make their businesses work better by having the workers be joined together emotionally. And they often require volunteer work and they often make the business bankrupt. Um, they usually strike during times of high and stress for a person, the death of a loved one, leaving home for the first time, loss of job, and bad breakup. Um, right. And one may think that these people are like hiding in shady corners on the street or like meeting you in dark alleys, but really you can find them absolutely anywhere. College campuses, religious gatherings, self-help and support groups, seminars related to spirituality or social change, and unemployment offices. Um, usually, of course, where people are stressed out, where they're looking for help, such as those support groups and college campuses, where people are still kind of looking for who they are, what they want in life. Um, it is often thought that people who are in cults are somehow emotionally unstable mentally, or they're just plain stupid, but really, it could be anyone. These are some of the common characteristics for a person who joins a cult. They're usually intelligent, and they come from a sheltered environment. They had contact with religion, but they rejected it. The average age is 19.5, and it is more common for males to be in cults than females. They have a history of difficulty with intimacy. They often blame others for their failures, and they have perfectionist goals. Also, they have a strong need to belong. They lack self-confidence. They have low self-esteem. They're gullible unassertive, and they have low tolerance for uncertainty, which means they like to see things in black or white. Basically, it's my way or the highway. This is right and this is wrong. They have disillusionment with the status quo, which means they don't 
really fit in with the culture that they're in. Naive idealism, which is that they believe everybody is good and desire for spiritual meaning, a higher purpose in life. Cults have certain methods that they use to draw people in. One is hype meetings, which is where they they find a person like at one of these places that I mentioned, like a college campus or something, and they're like, yeah, um, we have this like group, and you'll have to come and see what it's really like. I can't really explain it to you. And then at those meetings, they uh, gather around their members, and they're like all really joyful and happy, and they're like, oh, I'm so content with my life. So the person feels uncomfortable. They're like, why is it that these people are so happy? Does this cult really make people this? happy about their life, so they feel uncomfortable and they feel like their only way to achieve this content is to join. Also, they have intense, unrelenting pressure, which is where they're constantly calling you, keeping you from meetings for hours, having long discussions, and also they convince you they're not a cult. They tell you, no, we're not a cult, we're, we're not that bad a word, and they say that if your family tries to tell you, tries to pull you out, they're like, no, don't join that group. They're gonna say that your family is agents of Satan, and that's how they isolate you from your family and friends. Um, now that we discussed how they recruit, let's take a look at what this association consists of. They, uh, all cults have a 